Hello there people, this is Nova Mage, and welcome to, well, this game has already started, but yeah, I'll be talking over it and, well, hopefully clarify a few things that a lot of people have asked me, also introduce, uh, <laughs> that was a pretty good kill, uh, introduce uh, what is called the MAD, or Master Assassin's Deathmatch Game Lab uh, mode. Well, it's pretty much a mode that I've been working on for some time. Uh, well, actually, I really shared the idea initially with Sergio Capoeiroso during our very first days of Assassin's Creed 4, but I never really had the time due to work and other constraints to fully develop the idea. So, well, uh, recently I kind of decided to get into that, and well, for the the idea is that for the next Nothing Is True tournament, which I haven't quite decided the date yet, but more on that later. Uh, well, for the next Nothing Is True tournament, then uh, I do want to host a tournament for this game lab mode as well. Uh, the game lab mode itself is rather simple, it doesn't have too many rules. Uh, the idea is to fix, kind of in a sense, you could say, um, all the issues that, well, not only deathmatch, but if you see it from an assassinate perspective, it's like uh, fixing the issues that, well, assassinate has, but I'm not an assassinate player, so, I mean, it's not for me to say that. Uh, as a former death, well, not a former, as an active uh, deathmatch player, and a rather passionate <laughs> one, if I may add, uh, I must say that, well, the only issue that seems to arise as far as deathmatch goes is the contract system, or the only real issue. The other issues is just some of you guys whining. whining. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but I, what I mean is, as like for real, I mean the only thing that really feels like luck, um, pretty much in each and every game that you play of deathmatch, is the contract system. So I wanted to find uh, not only a way to eliminate that issue, but also uh, to add some of the elements maybe that make Assassinate interesting, while at the same time elimi uh, eliminating some of the problems that both Assassinate and Deathmatch have. So, it took a while of experimenting with it, going around, but this mode, it does, uh, well, it, besides the fact of being really insanely fun, uh, one of the main objectives uh, about it, uh, although of course, well, the fun part is going to be decided by you guys in the end when you do play it, uh, one of the elements that uh, I wanted to this deathmatch to have was, first of all, balance or some sense of balance between most abilities because it's absolutely impossible to, uh, well, to achieve perfect balance uh, for all abilities. That's never going to be the case because the meta game for a mode is always such that uh, people will will start working with a given ability, and for example, say that ability will work pretty good, and then other people will copy that person, uh, thus reinforcing the thought that a given ability or set is stronger than the others. But that's not necessarily true uh, most of the time. It just so happens that people, well, they do not try different sets, and they don't see the power in other sets until somebody else just I don't know courageously decides to try them. Say for example, uh, Deathmatch itself in this game. I mean, everybody... Uh, I started using Time Phase, for example, and it's like everybody on the planet was using Time Phase uh, at the time. Uh, I guess it, it was just like a really strong trend uh, of using Time Phase. Later after that, I decided to, well, uh, start using Shield as a counter to Time Phase because, well, Shield is the natural enemy of Time Phase. And as I started using it, and as I won the Nothing Is True tournament, <laughs> all modesty, <laughs> all modesty aside, but yeah, as I won the Nothing Is True tournament, uh, well, it seems that a lot of people they suddenly thought that uh, like shield sets were the way to go, but it isn't necessarily like that. It's just because well, it is it is an effective counter to a, an, a given strategy, which was the mainstream strategy at the time. Obviously, uh, if everyone was using firecrackers in the lobby, then firecrackers is not nearly as effective as... Uh, uh, I mean, my bad. Shield is not nearly as effective as uh, against firecrackers as it is against time phase because of many reasons. For example, uh, well, you can react to time phase uh, 
uh, firecrackers it breaks your log, whereas uh, shield, uh, time, whereas time phase doesn't do it immediately. I mean, like it takes a little time before it breaks the lock. But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> one of the points of the game was to uh, well to make a balance mode uh, or a balance as it could be, and even give a bit a chance to a lot of abilities that are not so useful in other modes. Decoy is probably the best example of that. And let's go specifically with the rules of the game lab. So the game lab is the mode template is assassin it, as you can tell. Like you can log anyone you want, you can get any kill. Yeah, so you're free. There's no contract system. But <coughs> the overall pace of the mode is not as assassin it is. I mean, it does get fast sometimes. But well, let's continue with the other parameters. The other parameters are the map is small. It's a deathmatch sized map. And the meter starts at the silent position. It actually took a lot of crafting to get to that point because we tried uh, different types of meters. And this is the one that seemed to work best in both in terms of balance and other stuff. So meter starts at silent and uh, there's no compass. That's the key element of the mode and it completely determines the pace. Because unlike Assassinate, where you have a compass to guide you to your targets, here you have nothing. And it does introduce a lot of new elements in terms of pressure and other things that you can do to your opponents. So, for example, uh, one of the things, one of the tools that I just used before there, uh, it's called Lock Pressure. So, oh, well, I'm dead. Um, lock Pressure essentially is that since they don't have a compass to know where you're coming from, if you lock them, they don't know where you're coming from. So they're going to have to take a guess. If you force them, force them into this type of guesses often, they'll make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I mean, like, for I did it before in this uh, very same match. I locked uh, the rebel and the rebel, I, but I was a, a mile away from the rebel. And uh, she deployed time phase just out of pressure. So you can really make it work for a lot of things like for example you can be in a blend group and then you lock them and then you unlock them so they'll, they'll know that somebody is near but they don't know where and they'll be pressured. If they try to screen you using the whispers uh, say for <laughs> that was lag <laughs> that was such bullshit lag. Uh, so I if they try to screen you using the whispers uh, they won't be quite <laughs> that lag. Uh, they, be they won't be quite able to screen you using the whispers for the simple reason that you can always choose to unlock them at any given time. If you see that for some reason they're going away from you or if they're coming close to you, you can always choose to just uh, unlock them and they'll completely lose perspective of where you are. I mean, they can, they're be they'll be forced into a guess of whether you are close to them or whether you are far away from them. Also, because you do pressure to them when you do this, you can like go around, flank them, because they're <laughs> usually they're gonna go in very predictable trajectories. I mean, if you see that they don't come your way, you can always just go around wh whatever building they are. I just let go a hidden kill there. That was horrible. But yeah, uh, that happens with lock pressure. You can do that. Second, look, for example, look right now, I'm doing lock pressures to somebody who's not very close to me. As they, as they get far away from me, well, here I kind of tried to maybe go for a hidden, but in any case, I ended up killing the other player. Uh, besides the efficiency of lock pressure into forcing your opponents into corners and stuff like that, uh, there's a thing that, uh, well, hay bills, there's no way to know that you're in a Habil. So Habils become effectively great tools for getting hidden kills because you're completely invisible to the opponent eye. Uh, finally, uh, there's another thing and it's that this mode, rather than being execution based as Assassin it is, it's completely uh, stealth based pretty much. I mean, or it can be execution based at times, but for the most of it, it is decided by stealth. Because the only way to pick you out in this mode is through behavior. There's no compass, there's nothing. There's nothing, there's no way to pick you out. The only way to pick you out is if you give yourself out. Or if you get hit by an ability such as wipe or firecrackers. But I mean, even so, it's not like anyone can afford to just randomly go throwing wipes or firecrackers. Uh, I mean, at best, uh, 
Uh, the thing that <laughs> these abilities do is actually expose you most of the time. I mean, if you don't know what you're doing and you throw any of these, these abilities... Well, firecrackers, firecrackers maybe not so visible, but wipe? <laughs> do you want, like, the whole planet on you? All you have to do is uh, throw a wipe, a uh, time phase, or... I don't know. Well, smoke bomb is not that much noticeable, but time phase is like... When somebody throws time phase, it's like the whole entire map gathers <laughs> where the time phase is. Finally, there's one little thing about this mode, and it's that, well, it did take some refinement, and, well, this is the version 1 of the mode so far, and I don't know, I think this is probably going to be the official one for uh, the tournament that I'm going to do. Yes, uh, I'm going to hold the Nothing is True tournament, yeah, well, which is what I was saying before. I haven't decided yet on the date, because, uh, well, I'm planning a trip to these states uh, soon, probably around June slash July. That's soon for me, <laughs> if you can imagine. But I haven't nailed down the details just yet, so I'm a little thinking about that. And I wanted to more or less make a Nothing is True on June 1st or maybe like July 1st. I'm not sure. Uh, that's why like, I'm kind of near the dates I'm trying to decide. But the thing is that, yeah, since I'm not sure when will I be traveling and that, so yeah. Uh, I really need to nail it down before I, uh, well, do whatever I'm going to do. But yes, that's the thing. When that does happen, uh, I will make an official announcement, so don't worry too much about it. Registration, yes, registration. Registration this time will be a little different uh, from the previous time. Uh, the previous time it was open, it was a free uh, entrance to the tournament, but this time it won't be like that. This time it will be free in a sense, but there will be preference to the top 8 players from the previous Nothing is True tournament. In other words, everyone who made it into the finals has preference over any other free participant. Uh, as far as, uh, well, the details that I can give so far, Nothing is True is going to have exactly the same rules as it had last time. Uh, if anything, the only difference will be the prizes. The prize pot will be split amongst both tournaments, like between MAD and Nothing is True. There's going to be half and half. So if you had read the previous thread on the UB forums, well, it's going to be half for each. As far as registration goes for a tournament, it's not open yet. It will be open once, uh, once. Uh, well, I have decided the date, and I post a thread in the UB forums. I will post a video as well here when that happens, saying that the tournament is open, but it is not yet open. Many people have asked me, so I understand that you're well naturally curious as to when will it be. But yes, uh, as I said, still no dates. And, but, well, that doesn't mean that, well, especially for MAD, we cannot be, you know, refining things and playing some competitive, you know, building up the mode. Maybe even get Ubisoft to put it in the public in the public playlist. Uh, you should definitely try it out with a few friends. It doesn't even require uh, having too many friends. And, uh, yeah, there's a detail about that that I want to share now. Uh, there's two, uh, you could say... Mm, modalities I don't know if that's how you say it but like two ways to uh, play uh, MAD game lab the problem with uh, mad yeah let's just say mad because it's it's so easy to say <laughs> mad rather than MAD yeah so the problem about the mad game lab or masters assassins deathmatch right uh, is that um, well um, it has a little problem because it is in a deathmatch map and shit, <laughs> that was nice of, of him. Uh, it is in a deathmatch sized map, and uh, well, sometimes there there can be respawn problems. Like if there are too many players and the map is extremely small, as it is the case with uh, Santa Lucia and a few other maps, uh, it can get really annoying and really lock based. But the good thing about that is that we cannot fix the respawn system. You're right about that, guys. But there's one thing we can fix. And that is the number of players in the mode. So ultimately, uh, the decision that I took, and well, of course, with the help of some people and testing out, was that it has to be constrained in the terms of number of players. Preferably, I mean, you can play it even with up to eight people. But the thing is that if you choose to do so, you should uh, play it 
on on a large map. Not 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 on a wanted map. No, that that's too large. But if you choose a map such as Charlestown, Virginia Plantation, uh, like those maps, I don't know even or they're they're alternates. Like no, it doesn't have to be like the original maps. But those maps, uh, like they have space. They have enough space for you to respawn. So it's really playable, even up to eight people. But uh, I mean, unless people agree on on voting for specifically the maps that they know work good for the mode, it can get really messy. So let's define two standard ways of playing the mode. The first standard way, which is the I would call the normal way or the casual way, is uh, up to six. Uh, up to six players can play, and they can play in pretty much any map. Uh, oh well, I'm not sure on the names actually. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one is the casual and which one is the hardcore. To be honest, I really have to work on which one will be the one for the nothing is true. Uh, no, for the MAD number one tournament, which will go along nothing is true. Uh, so the thing is that there's two modes. There's a four-player mode and there's a six-player mode. Six-player mode is gonna be a little more hardcore probably than the other one in the sense that well there's a lot more intensity a lot more people a lot more abilities and you have to be a lot smarter a lot more aware uh, but it does ha introduce a little undesirable element which is that there is a little luck a little luck at least when it comes to the respawn but it usually even in maps such as uh, Santa Lucia there's uh, it's not very common that a lot of people die. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about uh, specifically in the mad uh, game lab. It's not common that uh, like five people die at the same time. It could happen sometimes, but it's not the, the usual case. Usually, only one, two, or up to three person uh, people uh, die at the same time. So it's kind of fine because the map has like two or uh, three uh, respawn spots, and it's fine because I mean somebody could camp <laughs> around there but usually that doesn't work very well because if you start comp camping like respawn spots besides getting killed because you'll get killed eventually that's one thing uh, then there's another thing which is that uh, y while you're uh, stalled there like waiting for somebody to respawn near that area uh, other people are making point points like crazy on, on the other side of the map so that's one thing why uh, well it's number six it has the little thing but for example, with the number four uh, mode, the the four-player mode, uh, there's no luck. There's pretty much no luck. I mean, there could be a miraculous respawn, where you respawn in front of your opponent, but is not really the usual case. Usually, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, like somebody being there because normally they should be. Or the likely thing is that they'll be busy. Uh, uh, what a nice stun. Uh, anyway, it's really fun and I'll, I'll actually post some, quite a few competitive ones we got. We got it in different ways. We got one with seven players, six players, five players. So yeah, we got quite a few combinations and that's another great thing about this mode is that, well, you can play it with even only a few friends. Unlike most game labs, which like the more players there are, like they become funnier. But this one actually, it, it has like stable point which is around the 6, 5, 4 player mark. And it beyond, below 4 players, it may become a little not, not as much fun because there's not as many people and it may take some time to find anyone depending on the size of the map. In this case, we chose uh, Santa Lucia specifically for this reason because for a 3-player lobby for of MAD, then it's perfectly fine. I mean, you can play perfectly. I mean, you, you find people because the map is pretty small. But on a bigger map such as uh, Charlestown, then you'd really want to have at least four people or preferably maybe even six to play the other variation of the mode. And, well, I guess it's there's not really a way to kind of like describe how, uh, how, how will you have fun in the mode because it's just like the only way that you truly realize whether you have fun or not is by going into it. But let me tell you some points uh, straight ahead about the good, the perks of <laughs> well, not the perks because you're gonna think I'm talking about an ability set. I'm talking about the good things about this mode. So the good thing about about this mode is, first of all, there's no sign 
unless you choose to well of course uh, only unless you choose to do lock pressure there's absolutely no sign in the mode that gives you away in other words stealth is an efficient strategy it wor it just works like I mean, you don't have to worry like, oh, the fucking whispers, if I'm slow, they're just going to run away. No, because if that's the case, you can always just lock them at the, at the last second. And this is actually one of the reasons why the meter starts from 350. If you're stealthy enough to approach them and they don't know who you are, like not even until the last second, you can get amazing kills. You can get excellent kills. Like you can get silent times, uh, silent hidden, uh, you know, and maybe even a half focus because, for example, nobody, absolutely nobody, reacts fast so fast that as soon as you lock them, like, they're all, they already know where you are. No, that's weird. Normally, it takes them a little bit to react, and sometimes they won't even react because they're gonna think that you're far away. That's a, that's another great thing. Like they can think that you're far away. Uh, this mess. Oh, that mess up. I didn't lock the right person there, and yeah, got screwed up. But anyway, so the thing is that there's that. But then again, you can also choose to be a little more aggressive than that. You don't have to be passive about it. You can choose to maybe, you know, uh, I don't know, f uh, rush them d to do lots of acrobatics, do lots of, I don't know, other types of kills. And this part, I think, uh, yeah, I think, well, oh, that ending, oh, that ending, haha. <laughs> Oh my god, I really would like to go back and replay that, but whatever. I mean, you just you just should have seen how I was second there, like, until the very last second. And Yeah, this mode is really... It really gives you lots of windows to to win the game. It's like, well, people can go quite ahead of you, and... <laughs> well, first, firstly, I suck at this. I'm lagging like hell. <laughs> yeah, anyway. That's the thing, like, you can have lots of fun. You just, uh, you know, try it out. Uh, tell me your, th your thoughts about it in the comment section. Another thing I wanted to say is that this mode is one of the few modes that doesn't require Determined. It's, it is a free-for-all mode, but I tried it, and it's perf perfectly feasible and normal, and maybe even efficient, depending on what you do, to to try not using Determined. As well, another thing you can try is that rather than use Revelation as a kill streak, you can use Days. And in the, it is incredibly effective because in this mode, players tend to be close to each other. As soon as somebody kills somebody, then all players kind of like swarm in the general direction of where the kills are happening. So, uh, and, and there's lots of other stuff. I mean, you just really have to try it out. Uh, well, <laughs> I can't say I'm the only one who came up with this idea. Magma Thrower told me he pretty much had done something similar. Uh, so yeah, I'm not claiming, oh, <laughs> like, what, ownership? <laughs> Whatever. I know that I thought about it, but I don't know if anybody else had a similar idea uh, back when AC4 started. In any case, I am here, and I do want to promote the mode. I really want to take it to another level, and I th really, really think it has the potential to not only be a really competitive mode, but an extremely fun mode as well. And who knows, since the rumors seem to be that there's not going to be competitive uh, multiplayer in the next Assassin's Creed, this mode could have a pretty long viable life, or maybe even be integrated into a future game, into a future multiplayer, if there's any in, I don't know what, X6 or, or whichever it is that's going to be the next Assassin's Creed multiplayer. In any case, well, if we do get it integrated into the public playlist, that's uh, already something. And, well, that's the whole point of having a tournament and offering prize money for it. It's not because, well, I am trying to buy you guys, is that if you want something promoted, you really have to put your everything into it. And, well, of course, that includes money, time, dedication, passion, everything. It does require everything. So I really want this mode to go through and it's up to you guys. It's really up to your support, your comments, your feedback to see how far this is going to get. Anyway, people, time's uh, already going pretty long. I, have be I am becoming an expert in doing long videos, so I'm going to cut it now. All right. Uh, well, people, as usual, if you liked, remember to hit the like button and, well, subscribe if you want more. And <laughs> I say and so many times. Thanks for watching again. I will see you next time.